正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 121. He died. Shin Miao was drinking tea unhurriedly. At this time, the wind outside was blowing strongly while she was sitting at the corner of the hall. As she waited for the hot tea that Jing's handed over before slowly sipping it, it was as if she was an innocent and delicate young lady who was waiting for the slices of mutton to be prepared by the kitchens for the meal later. Lu Ling's expression darkened. Lu Su noticed that he was not right and followed Lu Ling's gaze to Shen Miao, and his expression also got somewhat serious as he asked, "What happened?" Lu Ling ignored him and also did not instruct the guards on any action. But instead, got up and walked over to Shen Miao. Be our youngest sister. Would like to have a word with you. Older brother Lu can say whatever words needed to be said here. Shen Miao set aside the teacup from her hands and smiled slightly at him. If something happened, it cannot be hidden. When Lu Qian and Lu Tan saw the situation, they also walked over. This time, the actions were rather big, and Madame Ma and Madame Yu noticed. They thought that Shen Miao and Lu Ling had some disputes, and at this time, they naturally would be biased toward the female. Madame Yu immediately went over and glanced at Lu Ling before shaking her head with disagreement. Ling Er, do not scare Zhao Zhao. Lu Su heard this and laughed loudly. Who is scaring who? Eldest brother. What exactly happened? Lu Qian was the youngest and normally spoke whatever was on his mind, so he asked whatever doubts were in his heart. Lu Ling looked at Shen Miao and Shen Miao smiled gently at him as if she was crystal clear as to what he was going to say. That kind of confidence and calmness made Lu Ling slightly startled. After a moment, he sighed and said in frustration and helplessness, "The guards had come with news that the two Ju almost entered the city. What?" Lu Tan exclaimed loudly and then seemed to be aware that her voice was a bit too loud, and quickly covered her mouth. When they spoke, the servants were further away and thus did not hear. The most taboo thing in this work was the morale of the troops. At this moment, everyone was gathered here to hide from the hailstorm. But if others were to know that the two Ju people had entered, one fear that the morale of the troops would be affected. Even if Lu Ling and Lu Su were not up in chaos. There would at least be panic. Madame Yu and Madame Ma were born into ordinary families and naturally had no natural abilities to protect themselves, so they blanked out when they heard the information. Madame Ma immediately said, "Ling Er and Sa Er, is it that now we need to first protect Zhao Zhao and the rest? How long can our Lu family withstand? And when would your father and the rest return? No matter how smart or capable a woman was, in the face of such a situation." One would not be able to help but panic. Even though the words were somewhat incomprehensible, Madame Yu still unconsciously said, "Why not go and hide first?" Lu Tan's and Lu Qian's faces turned somewhat white. They had been living in Zhao Chun City since birth, and even though they had heard stories of the battlefields from Lu Suai, they felt that those were things that were very far away from them. The two Ju had never entered the city before. And novels would not indicate or elaborate on what happened to the city when they were attacked. Even when the Ming Chi captured a city, there would be a massacre at times, much less with the cruelty of the Tu Ju. Be our youngest sister's words came true. Lu Qian murmured. Madame Ma and Madame Yu were startled. Maiden Yu looked at Shen Miao. Zhao Zhao hit the target. Previously, Be our younger sister mentioned that it was possible that the Tu Ju would attack the city. Lu Ling looked at her, and an unknown feeling appeared in his eyes. One thinks that Bi Ai's youngest sister presumably has countermeasures, and if one does not mind, please tell me, as this is a time between life and death. Lu Ling had placed his bearing on the lowest. Perhaps the Lu family would not be like other families that put up hairs, but with Lu Ling's seniority and status. He did not need to put himself so low to consult with a little girl. When Lu Ling's behavior was seen by Madame Ma and the rest, they were very surprised. Lu Ling was the most outstanding of their younger generation, but now actually had to consult Shen Miao. Shen Miao said, "Older brother Ling also has not told me about the current situation." Lu Ling waved his hand to the guard who came over to report. The guard felt a bit surprised upon seeing Lu Ling asking an unfamiliar young lady, but still replied honestly, replying to young lady, 
someone at the guard saw that the two Jew are gathering outside the city gates, the generals are not back yet and the city guards are short-staffed. At the end of it, he was so embarrassed he could not continue. Shen Miao ignored his embarrassment and asked, What is the number of troops? Are the two Jew scattered or uninformed? Lusa's gaze was still staring at Shen Miao. That guard thought for a moment before speaking. There are a lot of people, even though they are scattered but there are horses neighing, so there would be backup. The few people present suck in a mouthful of cold air, and Lu Ling's and Luce's faces suddenly became extremely ugly. At this moment the seriousness of the matter sunk in. Horses meant army and the army that could contend with the two Jew was currently fighting in the grasslands, so there was almost no real force in Zhao Chun city. But at this time another two Jews army had caught up. What Shen Miao said was true, make a declaration for the east and strike the west, and move the tiger away from the mountain. These two Jew eventually became cunning and even secretly developed another army. It was perhaps not as strong as the one Shen Xin was facing, but it was more than enough to wash the Zhao Chun city with blood. Madame Ma and Madame Yu realized that matters were not good and Madame Ma said, why not recall all the help that can be used, and protect these younger generations first? The Lu family's tradition since ancient times, was to let the younger generation leave first during times of trouble and sacrifice the older generation, leaving hope with the younger generation. Lu Tan's eyes immediately turned red and tugged on Madame Ma's sleeves, Mother, I do not want. If it does not work then just fight them to the end. Lu Qian gritted his teeth and was so angry that his eyes were spurting out of fire. Our bones are flowing with the blood of generals, so one is not afraid of those two Ju. The very most, either the fish dies or the net splits. Qian er. Madame Mangrily said, What nonsense are you saying? Do you want to die? If it does not work then eldest brother and I will cover your escape. It was Lu Su that spoke and said seriously. There is still a horse carriage in the residence, flee from the back doors of the city, there is a mountain road that is hidden and would not be found. No. Shin Miao interrupted their conversation. Lusa looked at her, you have a way? Shin Miao shook her head. A trace of disappointment flashed on Lu Qian's and Lu Tan's faces. They did not know why, but they had always thought that Shen Miao had great abilities. Even though she looked delicate and gentle and also had a tender appearance. Every time she speaks it was comforting as if she had more knowledge and made others peace of mind. But to see that Shen Miao could not think about a method now, Lu Qian and Lu Tan felt some despair. Then do accordingly to what second younger brother had said. Lu Ling said, first send you all up on the horse carriage, and all the guards in the residence will follow you. Just leave second younger brother and me in the residence. We will head to the guards. This was to sacrifice the two brothers to gain additional time for the rest. Madame Yu's tears fell in a short moment as she held onto Lu Ling's hands and almost fainted. How could both of you stay here? Madame Ma shook her head. We are a family. If we leave, we leave together. This deadlock was not going anywhere. Shin Miao shook her head again. No, be our youngest sister, what exactly do you mean by no? Lu Qian could not help but ask. Shin Miao swept her eyes at everyone, in Zhao Chun City, the one with the largest military force is the Lu family. The head of city guards is also older brother Ling and older brother Sa. The two Ju are well aware of this so if they entered the city, to inspire morale, the first they will deal with is the Lu family. As long as the Lu family is wiped out. The folks in Zhao Chun City would inevitably lose their fighting spirits and would have their hands tied waiting to be captured. Destroy the leader and the gang will collapse. So if I were the two Ju, even if all means are exhausted, I will deal with the Lu family first. It is simply impossible for the Lu family to retreat without any losses. To reveal such a terrible reality without any cover-up at all, made Lu Tan tremble before looking at Lu Ling, eldest brother. Is what she says true? Lu Ling stared at Shen Miao, correct? Luce's anger suddenly burst out, this cannot, that also cannot. Since one cannot escape and the two Ju brought troops over, then may as well let the Lu family fight to the end. Think we are afraid of them. One does not need to be that anxious. 
Shen Miao suddenly spoke. The entire hall fell silent for a moment. Lu Ling looked at Shen Miao and said softly, Does Bia younger sister have an excellent idea? It is not considered an excellent idea. Shen Miao's eyes were calm. She had a delicate, pretty, and pleasant appearance since birth and in a crowd of people with anxious emotions, only she had a faint expression. It was only now that everyone found out that from the beginning till now, Shen Miao did not present any other emotions. The Zhaochun city was a place at the border, and one would panic in the face of a sudden two Jews attack but only Shen Miao, this free of worries and delicate young lady was not surprised by it at all. The two Jew brought troops but delayed in entering, apparently hesitating, and with some apprehensions. I think that for so many years, even if the Lu family's army had been dispersed, the prestige still exist and would deter others three tenths. Their hearts are hesitating and they only try to probe but dare not come forward. That means their commander is also unsure. Thus one can make use of that. Madame Ma and Madame Yu did not understand Shen Miao's words but seemed to think that Shen Miao spoke very reasonably. Thus they did not utter a single word and quietly listened to her. Lu Su frowned and questioned, how can it be used to delay for time? Shen Miao replied lightly, my parents, Wei Zhu and uncles are not ordinary people and should have discovered that things are not right at their end, and when they discover this, they would quickly rush back to the Zhaochun city. Before that happen, one will only need to delay the pace at this end. But how to delay? Lu Tan had an impatient character and could not help but ask, as you said, the two Ju are so smart, they would also know that time is running out, and would quickly attack. Just show them what they are scared about. Shen Miao smiled lightly. What they fear is nothing more than that the Lu family's army still has residual force. So just let them see the residual forces of the Lu family's army. Be our youngest sister. Lu Qian anxiously said, Where are we going to get the Lu family's army? Shen Miao smiled gently. This will require everyone's cooperation. But before that, one does not know if both older brothers trust me. He looked towards Lu Ling and Lu So with an obvious gentle and humble attitude but a faint viciousness. Lu Ling looked at her seriously. I trust you. The outer side of the city walls of Zhaochun city was already very worn out, and a lot of earth and dust was accumulated over the years. Generations passed, and another round of military officers took up the lead to guard the peace of Zhaochun city. But the same as when cracks were discovered in the city walls, the once indestructible doors also gradually became decadent. At this moment at the city walls, there were not many guards moving as they were keeping a vigilant eye afar. As one gradually heard the clear horse hoofs and see the torches, large drops of cold sweat rolled down their cheeks. The two Ju was ferocious and it would be impossible for the remaining guards to confront them. From listening to the movements, there was a lot of two Ju who came. Fear was a mutual emotion so, in a short period, the guards' footsteps became much heavier. Not far away when the people were getting restless, Suddenly someone in the city guards shouted, What is that? Even the heavy night rain was unable to hide the surprise in those words. Everyone looked back and saw that within Zhaochun city, one did not know when but there were small and large torches lit. These torches were dense and accompanied by earthquake size shaking. When one listens carefully, there were also sounds of horses. When two armies confront one another, Naturally there would be scouts located up high to inquire about information. If the guards standing at the city's doors could see this, the two Jews scouts outside naturally could also see it. Those people who inexplicably appeared were particularly unclear on a rainy night, but the messy sounds of the shouts and horses steps within the rain and wind had an unstoppable and magnificent sense of power. It is the Lu family's army. It is the Lu family's army. Someone at the city guards shouted and almost knelt in delight, the Lu family's army has been restored to glory again. Those soldiers of the Lu family's army had long dispersed many years ago, and those who remained behind were all scattered merchants. The sudden shouts made everyone think about the invincible aura of the army that Lu Sui led, and it was as if they had a new hope, and at that moment the morale soared. Those new people in the guards held their weapons up and it was like their blood in their bones had heated up, 
and they were shouting together with those unknown people and horses, the noise was deafening. The first was for the drive, then one got tired, and by the third time, one became exhausted. The skyrocketing morale and sudden appearance of the additional troops, bearing the name of the Lu family's army, apparently made the two Ju side astonished. One could only hear the two Ju downstairs discussing exasperatedly, and those troops hesitated and dared not come any nearer. After being in a deadlock for an hour, both sides did not move and when the two Ju felt that there was something wrong, there was a shout of kill from outside the city. This time it was the real troops as Shenzhen and the rest had returned. Even though the two Ju's troops were agile and strong, they were not as good as Lu Suai and Shenzhen, who had fought battles for the county for all these years, so the troops were not deployed properly and were quickly defeated. Within the Zhaochun city, at the Lu residence's doors, Lu Ling heard the soldier returning to report, and finally let out a sigh of relief before respectfully bowing to Shen Miao. This time is all thanks to Biao younger sister. Biao youngest sister is so intelligent. Lu Qian exclaimed to even think of such a method. Shen Miao let Lu Ling summon all the available people in the residence, and then gathered the commoners on the streets and at the same time lit up all the torches. One person held two torches and then told the blacksmiths to use horseshoes to imitate the hoof sounds of the horses. The commoners of Zhao Chun City knew that this was a dangerous moment that determined survival. Thus they mimicked the shouts of soldiers very well. In addition to the entire night of wind and rain, it was more than enough to fool the two Ju outside. When the two Ju suddenly saw so many torches, they unconsciously thought that there were so many people. Horse hooves sound and shouts, all coupled with the fear of the Lu family's army, one would only think that there was still a part of the forces guarding Zhao Chun city. Fear struck the two Ju and they dared not blindly approach and try to explore. By delaying time till Shen Zin returned, everything could be resolved with Shen Zin and the rest. It looked simple, but when one was in a critical situation, it was easy to be in chaos, so how would one be able to think of such an approach? Lusa's attitude to Shen Miao had also changed a lot, this time it is all thanks to you. After Shen Miao came out with this idea, Luce's heart was filled with admiration and respect. Seeing the meteoric effect of the tactic, he nudged Shen Miao's shoulder and kept asking, Be a youngest sister, give an honest account. Did you secretly read the military tactics book at grandfather's study, then you said it as such? Shen Miao gently smiled, it was nothing more than an opportunity. Zhao Zhao must not be modest. Madam Ma looked at her with enthusiasm, if it was not for you today, Every one of us would be in trouble. Not only have you saved our residents, but you have also saved the commoners in Zhao Chun City. Thank you. Shen Miao could not help but laugh in her heart. She was not modest, as this was just an opportunistic thing. In her last lifetime, this kind of thing happened before, but Shen Miao could not remember clearly which date it was and only knew it was a day when it was raining hail. The two Ju attacked Zhao Chun city and even though in the end, Lu Suai rushed over with troops and also saved the city from being attacked, there was still a tragic price. There were innumerable people in Zhao Chun city dead or wounded, it was a miserable sight. At that time, to gain Fu Ziyu Yi's favor, she was working hard to learn military tactics and strategies. She also used this matter to seek Pei Liang's advice and on that day Pei Liang replied like this to her, the two Ju have some apprehension and dare not rush forward, as it would be unwise to be reckless and disheartened to escape, it would be better to give them a confused view of an empty city. As long as they can be delayed until reinforcement arrives, everything would be solved. She had recorded Pei Liang's words in her handwriting, thus she was very clear about them. Shen Miao knew that she did not have any abilities in war tactics, but she believed in Pei Liang. In those years at the inner palace, to gain Fu Ziyu Yi's favor, she would ask Fu Ziyu Yi's aid for advice, and finally, it brought her a lot of unexpected bargaining chips. That was the gift that Fu Ziyu Yi gave to her. Be our youngest sister is too naughty. Lu Qian heard the guards outside frequently reporting, and finally, the restlessness in his heart dispersed. He started to ridicule Shen Miao. Obviously one had known intimate information, 
but purposely still scared us like that, made us think that we had reached such a dire state. It scared me. Lu Tan slapped his head, so shameful. Not even as good as a little girl. Are not you also the same? Lu Qi on counter attacked. Xin Miao gently smiled and did not answer. She naturally knew that in the end it would be resolved, but deliberately made it this dire, because she wanted to let everyone in the Lu family understand, that just by relying on the remaining Lu family's army, not to mention protecting the Zhao Chun city, it would be a struggle to even protect the Lu family. If one does not have enough power in this world, one would not be able to protect those one want to protect. The two Ju was watching with tiger eyes, and sooner or later they would come back. When that day comes, what would the Lu family do? Only by letting them be truly aware of the danger would the Lu family feel nervous. The Lu family's younger generation, Lu Yang Ying and Lu Yan Tai, and even Madame Ma and Madame Yu, would then spare no effort to persuade Lu Suai to reorganize the Lu family's army. As for Lu Suai himself, he had eyes to watch and ears to listen to, so there would be a time when the rod in his heart would move. Shen Miao alone couldn't persuade a stubborn Lu Suai, and because of her identity, Lu Suai would inevitably have some hesitation, but it was not the same with the Lu family. Sometimes to achieve something, the most direct method should not be used, Instead, it had to be done around tactfully. Whatever Shen Miao wanted in her past life, she would directly say it out and do it, but in the end, she lost tragically. In contrast, Mai Furan could do it so tactfully that it was an art. She hated Mai Furan but had to learn the thing she did not have from Mai Furan. When the dawn of the second day arrived, Zhao Chun city finally calmed down. The two Ju were defeated in this battle to a sorry state. Originally Shen Miao's empty city tactic made the two Ju suspicious and with the addition of Shen Xin and Shen Kaiyu, such aggressive generals, they felt the biggest unknown impact and retreated to the grasslands. It seemed that for a long period, they would not have any energy to make a comeback. Even though it was a victorious battle, the mood in Zhao Chun City did not feel relaxed, particularly in the Lu residence, as they had tasted the reality of Shen Miao's words those days back, with that sudden attack on the city by the two Ju. To have such a terrifying neighbor eyeing them like a tiger all day, no one was able to safely sleep soundly. After learning that the empty city tactic was thought up by Shen Miao, Lu Su I valued Shen Miao more. Shen Xin was naturally very proud and kept boasting that his unmarried daughter was far better than a male. Two days later, Lu Su I announced to the entire Lu family, that the Lu family's army would be reorganized. The entire Zhao Chun city was cheering, and those who were running around to tell, were the juniors of the Lu family as they were very excited. Only Shen Miao had a calm expression because this was expected. The night when the two Ju attacked would eventually make Lu Su I determined, as rather than being chased in a bad condition, it was better to take advantage and make a comeback. As for money matters, Lu Zhu Yin still had some savings and as for military trainers, Shen Kaiyu and Shen Xin had yet the no place to use their martial skills, naturally. They were spirited to agree to it. It was not an easy task to recall all the dispersed soldiers back to the train, but the Lu family were all tigers. Since the decision has been made, their hearts became determined and in a short moment, Zhao Chun city started to bustle again. Life went by calmly and enriching. One day, Shen Miao was sitting in front of a table reading, when Lu Tan rushed in and almost collapsed on the chair at the door. Gu Yu jumped up in shock as Shen Miao looked toward her. But before she could say anything, she saw Lu Tan soothing her chest as she panted, Be our younger sister, have you heard about it? What about? Shen Miao asked. That little Marquise of the Z family. Lu Tan's gestures were in a flurry, he was the person that I mentioned before, who was as famous as older brother Caillou that little Marquise of the Z family. He went and requested for the commander to go to the northern Zhang to battle. Shen Miao's heart jumped and she nodded her head slowly as she looked at Lu Tan. I know about it. You have heard of the news before, that little Marquise kept on winning victories and the Zhang Nu were forced to the deserts. Lu Tan said, everyone kept saying that when the little Marquis returned to the capital, 
one feared that his meritorious services will be higher than those of the Marquis of Linen. His Majesty will reward him with a high-ranking title. These words were not false. Not long after Shen Miao reached Zhaochun City, Zi Jingxing also led the Zi family's army into northern Zhang. Zi Jingxing's brave performance on the battlefield was simply amazing. No matter if it was in military formations or fighting one-on-one, -on -one, he was so fierce and cold that even the enemy feared him upon hearing his name. One initially thought that Zi Jing Crossing would not be able to subdue the Zi family's army but they were however able to surprisingly produce repeated achievements, making others put away the last bit of suspicion of Zi Jing Xing. Everyone said that Zi Jing Xing would be the most outstanding male in Ming Qi, and would supersede the Marquis of Linen. When Xin Xin and Blue Suai discussed this, they poured praises on Zi Jing Xing, saying that he was an exceptional talent in this world. Because Shen Miao knew of Zi Jing Xing's ability in her past life, she was already jaded about it. She patiently listened for Lu Tan to finish, but saw Lu Tan's eyes redden and a bad premonition came as she asked softly, What is the matter with you? Dead. Lu Tan did not stretch it out as her tears suddenly fell. Little Marquise died. Zi Jing Xing was a hero like Shen Kaiyu in Lu Tan's heart and worshipped him greatly. Thus, at this moment, she could not help but have tears flow. That little Marquise was attacked by the enemy from the back before being surrounded. A thousand arrows pierced his heart, and his corpse was hung at the city walls for everyone to see. Lu Tan cried, "Be our youngest sister." He is dead, he died. The cup in Jingzi's hands fell onto the floor with a guangdong sound, and she immediately looked at Shen Miao in a panic. Shen Miao had some friendship with Zi Jingxing and if he was dead, what reaction did Shen Miao have? Shen Miao stood in front of the table and quietly watched Lu Tan cry. She was so quiet that it was scary as if what Lu Tan said was not big headline news but a common topic like today's weather or talks of flowers. Even though she had a peaceful facial expression, the hands that were holding the book became even tightened. Was Zi Jingxing dead? Thousands of arrows pierced his heart. His body was hung on the city tower to display to the public. The same outcome as in the past. Was it Zi Jingxing? As Shen Miao was in a trance thinking about it, it seemed that she wanted to differentiate if this was a joke or reality. However what flashed in her brain was that day in Guangwenteng's courtyard, a little rice dumpling deceived her and a youth with noble airs walked out from the forest. That youth was wearing an ivory robe trimmed with silver thread, handsome and dashing as he elegantly walked to her, step by step. His lips hooked up to a naughty smile, and his peach blossom eyes had an expression of a smile but not a smile which was very intoxicating. Three-tenths of the time he was teasing, six-tenths of the time he was testing, and one-tenth he was just a dissolute youth. He said, so, it was you. 